Hi everybody, this is the intro to my my short down and dirty Python exposure class, if you want to call it that. Um, I'm not really going to be talking about like integers and um, declaring variables and all that. It's more about um, what Python is, what my interest is in it, um, how I use it for tasks and for automation and for projects that I have, um, and what I'm not going to be teaching and what I'm not interested in. So just to get right into it, um, I have it, my bullet points up here in the top of the screen, you should be able to see. So my interest in Python, um, for those of you who don't know, Python's a, a general programming language that you can use to, to program just about anything. In uh, the second video of this course, I'll go in more in depth into exactly what Python is and compare and contrast it with other programming languages. Um, so my interest in Python is, it's generally the simplest method to get the results I want. So if there's something where I need to write a computer program to accomplish my goal, the easiest thing for me to do is to write it in Python. Um, Python is arguably, here's my second point, arguably the easiest general purpose language to learn. Um, there's a lot less uh, writing to be done. You can do this the same function in Python with a lot less typing. You can do something in a single line that might take three or four lines in, in C++ or 10 lines in C or one of these other languages, and uh, there's a lot less um, semantic issues like curly braces and brackets and single quotes and double quotes and all that is all very important in other languages. In Python, it's usually just indentation. So you you space bar in the next line and that's a sub subset of whatever the line above it was. It It's generally considered to be uh, the easiest general purpose language out there to learn. Um, it used to be Java was taught a lot in college, like people's first language was Java really commonly. Um, Python kind of came, started taking over that, that role and now it's probably 50-50 or maybe even a little more with Python than Java. Um, um, the third thing that I'm really interested in with Python is that there are thousands of modules and examples. So modules are code that somebody else already wrote in Python that you can import into your program and then just use basically short, short little snippets of code to call all the big parts of the program that have already been written by somebody else. Um, so you import different modules to do different tasks. So I can import a module that'll open up a browser and open a new web page and do something to it. Instead of having to write all the code to do all that, I import a module that already has all those commands in it and I can write like two words and have all of that happen for me automatically. So um, instead of having to write everything, to, instead of having to reinvent the wheel every time I want to write a program, there's inevitably a module somewhere for Python that does exactly what I need to do. So all I have to do is at the top of my program type, import whatever that module is, um, look at the documents for that module, and there'll be without a doubt one or two lines of code I can put in there to do something that would take 100 lines of code if I had to write it from scratch myself. So you're, you're standing on the work of a lot of other people with Python. Um, some of the newer languages like Rust or Golang or any of those, the newer ones that have been coming up, um, there's not anywhere near the, the breadth of modules and code that's already been written as there is for Python. Um, it's like C and C++ have probably more than Python, but Python has a huge library of our stuff that's already been done for you. Um, another one of my interests in Python is that most parts of anything I want to do have already been written, just like the, I was talking about with the modules. Um, so I don't have any like complicated, real like high level things that I want to do. I'm not trying to create the newest, you know, I'm not building a space shuttle. I want something simple to happen. I want a browser to open and then something to happen with it. Or I want to scrape a website, which means go to a website and get some kind of data or content off that website and bring it, bring it back to my local computer to parse it, which means separate it out and do something with it, process it. Um, th these are all like simple concepts in computer science. I, I don't have any like real high level things that I'm trying to accomplish. So pretty much anything that I can think of that I would want to do or automate has already been done in Python and I can look up a module that does 100% of what you need to do or I can just cut and paste other people's code that have examples which are all over the internet and they're all free to use. So it's not like, um, it's not a real heavy lift. Pretty much anything I think up that I want to try to do, I can find snippets of other people's code and just put them all together and work out the bugs and get it up and running like quickly instead of having to learn all the specifics and little details of every little part of the program that I want to do. It's, um, it's just, it's easy. It's easy to accomplish a goal. Um, what I'm not interested in is becoming an expert in computer programming. 
I, I wrote this in notepad, so there's no uh, um, grammar correction or spelling correction. So becoming a, an expert in computer programming, um, I'm not trying to get a job as a programmer. I don't want to go to Google or Facebook or anything like that. I don't want to become the, the Python expert. Um, I have something that's not computer programming related that I'm trying to accomplish, some kind of goal that I want to do. I, you know, I want to check uh, prices on Amazon every 30 seconds. And if there's a price drop in something, I want to be notified via text or something like that. Like I'm, I'm not in it because I want to be some kind of great, like well-known programmer or get a job as a programmer. I have all these ideas of things that I want to do and programming is the easiest solution to accomplish the goals that I'm trying to achieve. Um, another thing I'm not interested in is spending time optimizing non-critical things. Um, there's a bunch of like question and answer sites on, on the internet, like Stack Overflow is a good example, um, or Cura, but more Stack Overflow is more directed exactly towards programming, specifically towards programming, I should say. Um, and people will always make suggestions like, oh, you shouldn't do it this way, you should do it this way because it's faster, it processes faster if you write it in this order or whatever. I'm in it for completion of the task as easily and, and quickly as possible. And the majority of my tasks are not speed or execution or processing time critical. So it's not a, you know, I'm not landing something on Mars. I'm like checking a website, um, automating, like opening up something, changing a file name and resaving it or, um, you know, parsing data and putting it into a spreadsheet, something like that. Something where if it takes an extra, you know, 0.3 seconds to complete, it doesn't matter to me. If it works, I'm, I'm happy, right? <laughs> if it works, I'm not like, how can I get this processing time down from 1.2 seconds to 1.1 seconds? Like, that's not a concern of mine, but heavy duty programmers, that that's what they do for a living, it is a concern of theirs. Um, they, they worry about things like that. And there's a lot of critiques when you start getting into programming, when you look at people's like one question and answer sites, there's a lot of people critiquing the way things were written by an amateur because they say there's a better way to do it or a faster way or better execution, which I'm sure is true, but I just don't care about those things. Um, I have a goal and once I accomplish my goal and it works to my satisfaction, I have no interest in going back over this code and over and over it and trying to optimize it because that's not what I'm there for. I'm not there to be a coder. I'm there to accomplish a goal that encoding is just the, the most useful tool to accomplish it. Um, writing Pythonic code over speed to completion of my goal. Um, Pythonic is an interesting term um, because unless you write Python code, you've probably never heard the term Pythonic. So I thought it was interesting because I, I uh, searched for Pythonic for the official definition. And if you go to dictionary.com, it's uh, of or relating to Pythons similar to a Python or gigantic or monstrous, which is not at all what people mean by Pythonic code. So if you get into coding in Python, you'll hear the term Pythonic code. And apparently dictionary.com doesn't even know what Pythonic code is. Um, a more accurate description is again, Stack Overflow. Um, another answer off here. This is a big time source for uh, any questions that you might come across if it's, you know, the middle of the night and you're having a problem trying to figure something out. If you search it on here, you'll find a bunch of answers usually. So here, somebody asked that exact question. What do people mean by Pythonic code? Um, so here's a while loop that somebody wrote and they got criticized that it's not Pythonic enough because in Python, you try to write the simplest code, the simplest, most straightforward code you can. Um, so here's the de definition. Um, the main part of the definition is Pythonic means code that doesn't just get the syntax right, which means the wording right and the um, spacing and the brackets and everything right, but that follows the conventions of the Python community and uses the language in the way it is intended to be used. Um, so it's kind of up to a judgment call, but there's a lot of ways to do things in like C or Java that are a lot more simple in Python. So here's an example of a loop, and this is how you might do it in Java. And here are two ways that you could do it in Python. So you could have it, you know, all this, like I said earlier, it's shorter code and it's easier to learn. This is the Java version. And then you could do the exact same thing in just one line in Python. So the simplest, simplest, shortest way to do it, but there's a lot longer definition. There's, um, this is, so back to the original point of what we're talking about, these are things I'm not interested in is worried about making it as optimized and all that. I, I just, I want something I have an attain a goal I'm trying to attain. If I piece together some code and it works, I'm super happy. I'm not going back through and thinking, how can I get this down to shorter code? Is this Pythonic enough? 
Um, am I implementing all the, you know, the beliefs of the Python community? Like, I don't care about any of that stuff. Um, I know some people do. I'm just I'm not into that. Um, what was the next thing? Um, over completion of a goal. Yeah. So if it works, it works. And I don't care how Pythonic it is. So I'm what, uh, it used to in the hacking community, they have a term called uh, a script kitty, which is a derogatory term that they use for, um, like usually like teenagers or kids that are in all these, uh, hacking forums. And they basically find like, um, hacking tools online and they change them a little bit or they're using them like randomly they don't really know what they're doing and then they're bragging about all their exploits and all these things um, they're basically kids that can't write programs on their own that find all this code and try to use it and don't really aren't really sure what they're doing and it's a derogatory term in the hacking community but that's kind of what i do <laughs> like i find not hacking but i find uh um, I should say malicious hacking because the, the term hacking is used so ubiquitously now, like anybody that builds anything is called a hacker now. Um, I, I'm talking about with uh, malicious intent, like you're breaking into the CIA's database or something like that, or Boeing or something like that, or you're trying to steal secrets from a company. So all the people that really do that heavy duty um, for their full time job um, have all kinds of derogatory terms for people that are kind of like imitators and fakers. That's, I would say that's kind of how I am if I'm going to be honest about it. It's um, like I have no interest in learning all the intricacies of Python. I have an interest in it being the simplest way to accomplish my goal. So I search for what I'm trying to do. And if there's an answer on Stack Overflow that does what I want to do, I copy and paste it into my program and see if it works. And if it doesn't, I change it a little bit until it, it does work, right? Um, so here's an explanation of that. So this is kind of how I see myself. I don't think of it as derogatory. I think of it as I'm not invested in programming or the Python community. I'm invested in doing what I want to do and my time is important to me and I want the shortest path to accomplishing my goal. So that's what I do. So how did I get started in Python was I needed, I have a, an associates in computer science that I got at the same time that I got my bachelor's because I realized I could get, get my bachelor's and a, a second associates um, if I had three more credits in anything in computer science related. So I went online and I found this course here at onlinedegree.com, which is, I think it's three or four credits, might be four credits, and it's free, 100% free. So it's a computer science course, an introduction to programming, and it's all Python. And you can take it for free um, no experience necessary. It's online 24 hours a day, no schedules, all self-paced. Um, and it says you could receive credit towards your degree. So there's a couple of things you have to do to make sure you receive credit. And it has to transfer to a school that takes uh, ACE recommended credits, which that was the school I was in at the time did. Um, so it's, I forget what it is, 24 lessons or yeah, 24 lessons. And some of those lessons take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to complete. So it's, it was a long, slog to get through all that stuff and there's lots of stuff that i had no interest in learning that have to do with python um and i thought I, i'm never going to use this one <laughs> i have to learn it um that all the there's specific sections like databases like higher labor use i have queried apis before but like python in the cloud i'm probably never going to use that um and some of the stuff is super common variables and operators conditions and boolean expressions you're going to use all those in plcs so all that stuff I all, all had pretty good understanding on. Um, but if you're the kind of person that wants to know all the nuts and bolts of the language and the specific syntax of everything that the language can do, then this would be an option for you is you could go through this course. It's hundred percent free and there's no, there's no issue if you get three or four lessons into it and you decide you don't, you're not that interested. You don't want to do it anymore. There's like really no drawback. Um, so this, I'll put this in the description of the video, a link to this if you wanted to go do this. This is more um, if you're really interested in knowing all there is to know about Python and it, there is a lot more computer science stuff in it. Um, if you're just interested in getting something to work, which is what I, which is basically what I want to do, um, then you can, can follow along with this video series that I'm doing right now because that's uh, what I intend on showing you guys, my workflow. Workflow is a big buzzword in, in uh, computer programming um, and in Silicon Valley, not even with programmers, with everything, workflow, workflow. Um, 
you know, your step, the step one, step two, step three, and the process that you go through when you have a new project or what you're, what I have you. Um, so I'll get more into my workflow, what specifically Python is, how it's better and, and worse than other programming languages and all that in my second video.